Hello. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about uh, the idea of poles and zeros and how they relate to the Z transform. So again, the, the main idea for tonight are poles and zeros. And where these come from is, is we've seen a lot of cases when we do a Z transform, we get what we would call a rational Z transform, which means that we can write X of Z as a fraction where both the numerator and denominator are polynomials. That's another name for it. So the numerator is some polynomial in Z, and the denominator is some other polynomial in Z. And it turns out the values of Z that make this fraction either go to zero or infinity turn out to have important properties in determining how the system behaves. And so we know that, that uh, if P of Z equals zero, that will tell us that x of z equals zero. And so the values values of z are the, the roots of p of z. So the values of z where p of z equals zero are what we call the zeros of x of z. Okay, and so again, those are the roots of the numerator, said another way. And then the other thing is we say, well, what happens at, at the roots of the denominator? What happens for the values of z where q of z equals 0? Well, then that says that x of z is going to infinity, right? That this, this uh, fraction will go to infinity if the denominator is 0. So the roots of q of z i.e., you know, where q of z equals 0, or what we call the poles of the z-transform. And this has an important impact, as I said, on how the system behaves, especially the pole locations, we'll, we'll see, will tell us things about stability and causality. But let's, let's uh, go on and look at, at another uh, example. I need a new page here. Pull that back down. All right, so let's do the, the uh, example we saw today in class. And we saw, for instance, the, the case where if I have x of n is one third to the n u of n, right, that this turns into the z transform. Sometimes we abbreviate that. The sort of funny script z up here, cursive z. We say that, that this gives us x of z and it's going to be 1 over 1 minus 1 third z to the minus 1 and again, the region of convergence, always important, is z bigger than a third for this example, right? And we got that from the finite geometric series. Well, at first glance, you might say, let me, let me bring that down over here again. This is not obviously immediately a ratio of polynomials unless you've had a little practice working with them. But to see how to do that, we, we multiply the numerator and denominator both by z, right? This is multiplying by 1. So that even though we often solve for them this way, if we want to find poles and zeros, it's safer until you get some more, or some practice with it to multiply everything through by whatever power of z you need to make everything positive powers of z. So right, if I multiply this through, I get 1 times z is z, 1 minus 1 third z to the minus 1. Well, the, this gives me z, and this gives me uh, 1 third. In fact, you know, I'm thinking now it might be even a little clearer. As we go forward, let's do this. Let me redraw the denominator, if you put up with this, in red. And we'll use color coding. We'll put the zeros in green. Because now we're going to go find the, the, the poles and zeros. So the zeros, we say, well, we want here, our, our, our polynomial for the numerator is just z. Now, again, I'm overdoing this. Normally, we would just look at this and say, where is the root of this? Well, z equals 0. So we have 1, 0, 
at z equals zero. And for the poles, we look at the denominator polynomial. Right there, q of z is equal to z minus one third, which we want to set equal to zero. So this one is only slightly less trivial. Right, we very quickly see, well, this will be zero when z is one third. So I have one pole at z equals a third. And it turns out these two things are related. It's not an accident that the region of convergence begins and ends at a pole. And that's a common property. Regions of convergence are bounded by poles. And so the other thing we do with these a lot to help us visualize them is we draw a picture of the z-plane to make what we call a pole zero diagram. And then because the unit circle, as we've seen, is very important, we often put the unit circle on it. So again, this is my real axis and this is my imaginary axis. And I would say my my pole, keeping things with keeping with my color system, this is about one third. We put a little X on this thing for the poles. And then I'm making a little dashed line here to mark the limit of the region of convergence, right? Because we know the region of convergence is everything outside that. Let me draw the zero first. We put an, an O for each zero. So I have a zero at zero, which is the origin, a pole on the real axis when z equals one third, and then I'll make the region of convergence, I'll sort of shade it in light blue. There's probably a fancier way to do it in the drawing program, but I don't know it yet. So here's my region of convergence. Everything outside this dashed red line, this is my ROC. An important piece of this is that this region of convergence does include the unit circle where z equals 1 and so that means that this is a stable sequence that the Fourier transform exists and, and that we could uh, we can get all that from the pole zero diagram. Okay so we can go to more complicated ones and you see some examples of the class problem the homework but at least you've seen an initial glimpse of, of how pole zero diagram what how we find the poles and zeros what they're defined as and, and, and how they work. Okay, have a good night.